Well, good morning, everybody. It's a cold morning, but it is uh, an important day here in Nashville. Uh, I'd like to start by offering a few thanks. So let me start by offering thanks to our council members Taneka Vercher, Scott Davis, and Sharon Hurt, who are here with us today. Uh, leaders on the Metro Council, especially on the issue we're about to talk about. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Pinnacle Construction Partners co-owner and co-founder Michael Carter, who is here. Uh, Ashley Northing Northington, the founder of Denor Brands and Public Relations, and the chairwoman of the Mayor's uh, Minority Business Advisory Council. Uh, Carolyn Waller with the Nashville Black Chamber of Commerce, Yuri Kunza with Nashville His Hispanic Chamber, Marcella Goma Gomez with the Tennessee Latin American Chamber, Marilyn Robinson is here as well, I see. I don't know if I've missed anybody. Um, well, I'm going to turn the page. Uh, Joe, because I know I'd missed you, Joe, and uh, you must be on the second page. Joe Woolley with the Nashville LGBT Chamber, Diane Michelle with the National Association of Women Business Owners and the Mayor's Minority Business Advisory Council, Michelle Brown and, Brown and Jennifer Carlett, I know we're here with the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce, Metro Purchasing Agent, Michelle Hernandez-Lane, um, uh, Ashford Hughes, uh, who is here to my far right, and you're going to learn in just a little while that he has barely got a voice left today, but he is here today because this is important. He is Metro's Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer, and of course the Nashville Business Incubation Center for housing us today. So I'm here today um, because my administration is taking important steps to eliminate significant disparities in Metro's procurement process so that every qualified minority and women-owned business in our town will have a fair shot at getting Metro business. The disparity study that Metro government uh, commissioned back in 2017 and released this fall found that these disparities are likely caused by race and gender of business owners and that Metro is a passive participant in this unlawful discrimination. Clearly, this is wrong, and it's something that we as a community have an obligation to fix. And as the mayor of this city, I am taking that obligation very seriously. I'm committed to making sure that economic opportunity is available to everyone in our city. And to do, to do this, we need to unleash the potential of each and every business and individual that resides in Nashville. Earlier this year, I appointed the Mayor's Minority uh, Business Advisory Council to advise me and my administration on ways to open up our markets and identify new opportunities for minority-owned businesses in Nashville. We've been working with other advocacy groups like the NAACP and the Urban League, as well as other business uh, leaders across Nashville to make uh, the procurement process more transparent and inclusive for the community at large. Then the disparity study, an independent study by consultants from Griffin and Strong Law Firm found that Metro's procurement process has failed to support minority owned and women owned businesses in Nashville. S simply put, they haven't received as much business with the city as they should have. These results, although they're not too surprising, are unacceptable, and it's time to take action. By, I think, everyone's account, Nashville's economy is booming. Unemployment is perhaps as low as it's ever been in our city. Uh, but not everyone is benefiting. That's clear to me as mayor. I hear it every day. Um, if we're going to succeed as a community, every single segment of our city should find a way to be able to participate, share in the collective prosperity, and grow wealth in their families and in their businesses. My commitment as mayor is to create a new Nashville where each and every one of our, of our residents has an opportunity to succeed and where we are supporting all of our residents. To get this right, we have to attack some systemic problems that we have in our community. Um, some systemic problems that underline, underlie the data that we have um, uh, discovered as part of the Griffin and Strong study. 
Uh, Metro Council members Taneka Vercher, uh, Sharon Hurt, and Scott Davis are going to sponsor and are sponsoring legislation to create an equal business opportunity ordinance, which will establish for the first time in the city of Nashville annual race and gender procurement goals for Metro as a whole, as well as for specific projects with accountability measures, again, for the first time, with accountability measures that will um, guarantee performance by prime contractors that the city employs. These measures will be based on market availability because that's what the law requires. And it's market availability of minority owned and business and women owned businesses here in Nashville. And they will give our procurement program the teeth it certainly hasn't had in the past. That's what this is really all about, putting teeth into our procurement program. We'll periodically review the availability and as availability changes, our goals will change to reflect growing availability of minority and women owned businesses in this community. I think this is the right thing to do. I know everybody here shares that sentiment with me. But uh, that's not the only reason to do it. It's actually the smart way for Nashville to grow as a community. Helping our city's minority owned and women owned businesses, helping them succeed is going to lift us all up. It's going to help Nashville grow as a community at large, much more quickly and much more fairly, much more equitably. That is my principal goal as mayor, to make sure that this moment of, pro of prosperity is equitably shared across our community. I want to thank uh, Council uh, Lady Vercher, Council Lady Hurt, and Councilman Davis uh, for sponsoring this legislation. I know with their leadership, the vast majority of the Metro Council will get on board and support and adopt this legislation. And I ask for the Council to act with all due haste to get this done so that we as a city can make the improvements we know we need to make. I'm available starting after this meeting to meet and talk with any single Metro Council member who has any questions about this so that we can get those questions answered and get this legislation adopted quickly. Additionally, we'll be taking uh, administrative action um, to the extent we need to to adjust our procurement regulations so that they match up with the recommendations from Griffin and Strong and with the data that we discovered in the disparity study. We know that we'll have to make um, some changes to our procurement regulation in order to level the playing field because that's what this is all about. So that minority owned and women owned businesses um, uh, have a chance to compete across the board. We'll be setting aside uh, certain contracts ex exclusively for small businesses in our community. We will also reconcile any inconsistencies that there might end up being between the ordinance that the council members are proposing and our current regulations. We'll develop an enhanced communications plan to, to help minority owned and women owned businesses understand Metro's programs and how they can better prepare for future procurement opportunities that we'll have. We'll also develop a robust support uh, services network through partnerships uh, with the various chambers of commerce in the city the National Business Incubation Center, and the, the National Association of Women Business Owners, and other organizations. And once Ashford Hughes gets over his cold, uh, the city's uh, chief diversity, equity, and inclusion officer will take the lead on implementing these steps. Um, I'm proud that Ashford um, was one of, if not the first um, change in the mayor's office that was made after I became um, mayor back in March. And uh, his direct access to, to me in that role has been, uh, I, I hope, uh, good for him because it certainly has been uh, great for me to have that direct contact, that direct access to somebody working every day on equity issues in our community. So I'm not going to rest, our city is not going to rest until I can see that Metro is spreading the wealth to every single corner of our community. Um, equitable opportunity is not just a priority, it is the single most important priority to this administration, to me personally. The more diverse we are as a community and the more we support that diversity by ensuring that everyone can partake in our prosperity, the stronger we will be as a city. So um, we made a big deal of, of this announcement today about a single piece of legislation. 
because I believe that in this city there is mo no more important issue that we can confront than making sure, making sure that in this moment of prosperity that everybody gets a chance to participate in it. We know that that is a critical enterprise threatening uh, challenge for this community and I am committed every day to working to make sure that we make progress on that issue. So thank you all very much for coming today. I'd now like to invite uh, Council Lady Taneka Vercher to offer a few words. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, I would like to begin by saying this is a huge moment for minority-owned and women-owned businesses, but more importantly, it's a huge moment for our city. Um, we are here today because we are standing on the shoulders of giants. We're standing on the shoulders of those that have pushed for accountability, that have pushed for equity, that have pushed for inclusivity. We're here because of many of them, and many of you are here actually in this room. We have a commitment, a strong commitment from our mayor, and just want to publicly thank him for pushing us forward and leading this so that we're here at, at, this, at this huge moment. This is huge. This is huge for our city. I can't, you need to clap on that. I want to thank our sponsors, um, Council Lady at Large, Sharon Hurt, to my right, um, Council Lady at Large, Erica Gilmore also, has also joined us, um, Councilman Scott Davis. Um, we stand here in solidarity. We're ready to do the work. We know there's been huge gaps as it relates to um, equity and opportunity for, for women-owned businesses, for minority-owned businesses, and this is long overdue. This is the right thing at the right moment. This is about removing barriers. This is no more excuses. So now we need to get to work. Um, I'll turn it over to uh, Michael Carter. Um, that's gonna come up um, and provide us with the business community perspective. And, and thank you so much. Thank you, Councilwoman Bircher. I'm honored to be here today with so many business leaders and community leaders who all recognize the significance and the importance of the Equal Business Opportunity Program and what it means to women minority businesses. Our national economy is vibrant and is thriving. Women and minority businesses provide real jobs and help increase the financial stability for many and drive economic growth. So our challenge, collectively, our challenge is a commitment to leveling the economic playing field. For so long, for too many years, capable women and minority businesses have been overlooked and underutilized. As one of the co-founders of Pinnacle Construction Partners, LLC, I know all too well what it's like to pursue public and private opportunities and feel like truly the work's out of my reach. As one of the leaders of a group that is pushing for private and public contracting equity and supplier diversity, I'm familiar with the unique challenges that women and minority businesses face. And so I'm proud, I'm very proud and pleased that Mayor Briley has the gumption, has the fortitude, more importantly, has the political will to step out front and say, not on my watch. I'm proud and I'm pleased that he has said that this disparity challenge that we face will not stand. So my excitement to hear today through this business equi equity package is not for me, and it's not for my company, but it's really for the hundreds upon hundreds of Nashville businesses who will have an equal opportunity, an equitable opportunity to grow their businesses, create jobs, and impact their network. So as the mayor says, when the tide rises, all ships sail. 
I'm just excited to be here today to say I was here when the tide rose. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Michael. Uh, I want to say, ship ahoy. <laughs> but I, I, I must say that um, if you do what you always done, you're going to get what you always got. Today, we are moving forward. Today, we will no longer do what we once did. And I am so proud and so happy and thankful for our mayor, for the courage that he has shown, and I hope that he will continue because we will be watching and making sure that the accountability and enforcement of this legislation takes place. So we thank you very much for stepping out doing this. And for Ashford and the work that he has done, Michelle, we really appreciate it. And Taneka mentioned the shoulders of people before, and, and, and with former council member Jerry Maynard being here and council member, former council member Don Majors, I have to speak your names because if it were not for the path that you both blazed for us, we wouldn't be able to do it today. And for that, we are sincerely grateful. Thank you. And I'm gonna try to make it through this. Um, equity and inclusion. Uh, that is exactly what we are addressing today. That is what the minority and women business community have told us time and time again, and is what they have sought. Not a handout, but a level playing field. This is really, as Councilwoman Virtue said, a historic moment for Nashville. Today's legislative action begins to set the tone for Mayor Briley and this administration's actions around Metro government setting an overall internal equity framework and establishing an equity agenda. This is a step forward in proving to the community that we are doing less talking and providing more action to enhance lives. Our overall framework will prioritize equitable opportunities across all programs, including our own internal operations, as you see today, to ensure that all Nashville residents, especially the most vulnerable, have access to economic opportunity, public safety, and housing and transportation options. Our efforts will be laser focused on addressing long-standing systematic issues that have been historically overlooked, such as minority and women business inclusion within Metro. We have already begun some of this work, starting with Mayor Briley allocating $25,000 to each of our large ethnic minority chambers to work on their capacity building within their membership. The outcomes of our efforts towards diversity and inclusion will be measurable to allow for continuous growth and development based upon data, best practices, and stakeholder feedback. My office, our administration, looks forward to continue to work closely with our purchasing agent, our business assistance office, and our minority and women business uh, firms within this city to make certain that we are increasing the dollars that are being spent with these firms. I also look forward to doing this work in partnering with Metro Departments, Metro Council, and the greater Nashville community as we seek transparency and we seek all these changes to come to light. And I bring back up the mayor. Thanks, uh, uh, everybody, for coming and uh, for being patient and listening to us. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, we'll be glad to, to answer them. All right, no questions? <laughs> well, thank you very much. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.